it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, sorry about the last two years. I, uh, <laughs> I've been working a lot and I never really found enough time where I could read this oh, well, out loud uh, without having every interruption imaginable. And now I have a little sister, another little sister. Uh, she's adorable, eight months old. Uh, but she takes up a lot of my time you know, between, you know, work and then, you know, taking care of her while my mom is, you know, doing her actual job. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking the time while they're out doing stuff. You'd think, oh, with, with, uh, with quarantine, you know, you, you would have plenty of time. No, actually, I, uh, don't exactly get to experience quarantine as, I have to work. I work in the food industry and as such I was not laid off but my hours were drastically cut and now they're back on which is which is good. Working mornings now instead of nights. Oh, I'm so tired. Anyway um oh yeah I feel like I should warn you there will be sounds of my dogs getting up and down off the bed as I don't have the heart to keep them out of my room. Because, I'm again, I'm by myself. My dog has separation anxiety, so he tends to jump the fence if, uh, if I lock him out. Um, actually, come here! Come here! Come here! Of course, he's, he's not going to do it. Come here! Come here! On the bed! Come here! Oh, come here! Come here! This is, this is, this is the one who will be making most noise um, while I'm reading. Of course, the little one, Bella, come here. If you hear any yapping or barking, it's this one. Blame this one. Her name is Bella. You can curse her all you want. Just go, darn you, Bella, shut up or something. I don't know. I don't care. Okay, go lay down. They're not going to lay down now. They're going to be in my face. I'm so sorry. Go down, lay down. Anyway, Geek Bella. Again, it has been two years, and I'm sorry for that. Those who actually... um actually here to watch my videos instead of just watch my playlists <laughs> buddy why come on lay down lay down mm. Mm. he's old all right so i believe we are on chapter four now although it doesn't technically have chapters it just has parts where it goes back and forth through point of view um Last time we were on the part where, if, holy crap, I forgot her name, Elle. Well, how did I forget her name? It was Elle's point of view and she was watching the, the, the TV show. Yeah, whatever it's called. Now it's Darian's point of view. Did I pronounce a Darian or Darian? Probably Darian, okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're probably going to want to actually read it with me. That's right. You started doing that now. Okay, so I'm going to switch the camera around. It'll be just a minute. If you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, so your girl is not, um, how you say, tech savvy at all in any way, shape, or form. And I discovered that my computer does, will not, will not flip the camera. When paused, I would have to stop it and restart it, and I really don't. I don't want to do that. I, I'm just. I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. But I'm not doing that. Um. So instead, you're gonna have to listen to my dulcet tones as I'm just reading it instead of actually watching. It. I'm so sorry. If I had any, thank you. If I had any sort of technological prowess, I would in fact. Uh, you know, edit them together, but unfortunately I do not. So, sorry. But you're- Whoop! Great. You're just gonna have to do with me. As I am. So sorry. Alright. Pretend you're in a library. Pretend you are ten years old and back in a library. Looking up at the poor sod who is working minimum wage. 
to read you some books. All right. Or volunteering. That's good, too. You should volunteer. But, you know, safely. Safely. Wear masks. Masks are good. If you like them. Anyway. Darian. I am so, so, so sorry. Gail hands me an ice pack as soon as I make it to the green room. What just happened? I take it and I wince as I press the back pack against the back of my neck. Gail shakes her head. I thought security had her. I mean, they did, I say, right after she had me on the floor. I thought I'd choke on her tongue. Blech. That's right, the girl forced a kiss on him. Ugh. Uh, please, if you are fans of people and you go to see them or meet them, don't do what that girl did. That'll just make them hate you. Or at the very least, avoid you. And I don't think you want that. Because that would would make you sad. I don't want you to be sad. Okay. Continuing. My damp hair, no longer perfectly curled, sticks to my neck like seaweed. The fangirl had come at me so fast, I barely knew what or who hit me until I was already flipping over the rock-hard sofa and onto my already bad back. Which is ridiculous, I know. I'm 18. I shouldn't have a bad back. But after two years of carrying my co-star around on Seaside Cove, it was supposed to be romantic. The fans loved it. My chiropractor told me to lay off stunts for a while. I'm pretty sure that includes random girls lip-locking me in the middle of Hello America. Okay. I just realized something. I really should not be reading with my glasses on, so they're going off. Okay. Gail rubs her hands together nervously. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. I'm so sorry. It, it was my fault completely. I should have had more security. I should have said something. Hey, I interrupt, gently touching her elbow. I'm sure it's not your fault. You know that. We both knew. Knew? Knew? Um, we both knew these abs were killer. She gives me a pained look but smiles. Don't make me laugh. I'm your handler. I should have handled this before they surprised you on live TV. Mark's gonna shank me right up the middle this time. I sink into the green room couch. Mark. My manager. My number one cheerleader. My bailer out of jail. And somewhere far, far down that list. In the galaxy far, far away. My father. Gail's been on his bad side for quite a while now. To him, she's a fumbling idiot, and sometimes she does fray at the edges, but everyone does. And if he thinks she is a fumbling idiot, I don't even want to know what he thinks of me. Besides, Gail's the only person left from the, from BSC. Before Seaside Cove. Everyone else, my assistants, their assistants, and Gail's assistants, have all gone through Mark's ringer. But Gail stayed. She's a monument to where I came from. A piece of history from a time when I never thought a fan would tackle me on the stage of Hello America. I also never thought I'd purposefully miss a Starfield question. I knew the answer too. It was so easy. But that was the script. I'd miss Ablena, get dunked, and show my abs. All in a day's work. Gail motions to my neck. Hurt bad? I can feel it. So, I think that's a good sign. Nodding, she sits down beside me. Once security pried off the fan, the producers ushered me into my dressing room to get checked out and to go over the legal jargon I signed to go on the show. Mainly so I wouldn't sue them for injuries. Of course, I wouldn't sue, but the second Mark found out what happened, he ordered us to stay in the studio until he arrived. He'd sue Hello America in a heartbeat. But that's not even what I'm most worried about. So, I say, turning to Gail. Who was supposed to tell me about the Excel sitcom contest? I'm sorry, I just... Gail usually meets my eyes when she talks, but now she takes out her phone. There's a lot going on, and it slipped my mind. Gail? She begins to check her email. Another good thing about working with her for so long. I can tell when she's lying. Is it hot in here? She starts fanning herself. It's hot in here. I'll go ask someone to turn on the air. I put a hand on her shoulder and keep her from getting up. Then offer her my ice pack. She takes it and presses it against her flushed cheeks. I'm not cut out for this, she says. You kidding? I'd be lost without you, G. You know that. 
This is my fault. She shakes her head, burying her face in the ice pack. I mess everything up. You do not, I reply. No one could have predicted Fishmouth. Fishmouth? That's a horrible name, Darian. Nickname. Nickname. That's a horrible nickname, Darian. I switched from Dar Darian to Darian. I'm so sorry. You'll, you'll find that a lot. Ah. Okay. I shrug. I mean, it's not like she took the name to took the time to introduce herself. Usually when someone lands on me, I at least get her name first. Did you see that look on that one guy? Rick Daly? He covered his face so fast you'd think he had his chin insured, insured for half a mil. That was apparently the wrong thing to say. Panicked, Gail drops the ice pack against... Why am I fumbling? I'm so sorry. Panicked, Gail drops the ice pack and begins to inspect me again. Lifting up my now floppy hair, checking my arms. Crap, crap, crap. Your face. Is your face okay? Bruised? You're filming tomorrow. I told Mark not to let you strip on the show. I told him it was a bad idea. Mark's going to murder me if... I grab her hands and clasp them together. Gee, it's fine. I was lying. But, 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 I'm fine. I repeat, gently easing her down onto the couch and return the ice pack to her hand. Gail is the closest thing I have to a friend. After my actual friends turn into, well assholes. I know Gail. I trust her. She's that little voice in the back of my head telling me when something isn't a good idea. Like taking flying lessons from Harrison Ford or buying a house on the same street as Justin Bieber. And she always seems to Houdini me out of pits of fan hell or stalker paparazzi just in the nick of time. But I forgot to tell you about the convention, she cries. Excelsicon! I completely forgot! The name punches a shirt of ice through my stomach. She must see that my face twists because she begins to fret again. Oh, crap. Oh, no. That's the one thing you used to go to with. It's fine. I lie again. Actually, you sit tight. I'll be, I'll be right back. Slowly, I back out of the green room and close the door quietly behind me. I touch my mouth, feeling the wound from where Fishmouth's teeth collided with the inside of my lip. Maybe Mark's right. Maybe I do need someone who can keep the fans at arm's length. Provide a little muscle just in case. No, I tell myself, stop it. You are trusting. You love your fans. You're cool and funny and chill. You are Jennifer Lawrence. Even as I say it, my heart begins to sing into my gut. Because Excelsicon may be a con, but it isn't just a con. It's Excelsicon. The con I used to fly across the country for with my best friend, Brian, Back before I had to start covering my face to meet a date at a restaurant. Back when I could date. Back when it wasn't a publicity stunt. Back before my abs had more scream time than the rest of me. I scratched my stomach at the thought of it. The airbrushed makes makeup, I mean, contouring, makes my skin itch like hell. Even thinking about going back to a con hurts. If I go back, it means I'm really not that Darian anymore. The normal, well geeky and obscure guy with normal friends who didn't betray him. So I just always said I don't do cons. Everybody knows this little factoid. Gail, my publicist, Stacy, Mark, the countless assistants he would fired over the course of my career. This isn't a secret. It's probably even in my personal file at the agency, highlighted and underlined with scented marker. So yeah, this is kind of ticking me off. I barely leaned back against the green screen do room door when a thunderous voice makes me jump. Darian! It's my father. My throat tightens. Old man! I try for a joke because he hasn't let me call him dad in three years. To protect my image, he said. I also try to sound like I'm happy to see him, which is an even bigger joke. Finally managed to hobble out of L.A., his face falls, looking tense and unfriendly under the low watt institutional like lighting, and he drops his outstretched arms. At this point, I'm sure he's more plastic than person, but most people who hate wrinkles become Daleks over time anyway. <laughs> Daleks. What are you doing without Gail? I knew I should have gotten you a bodyguard. She's in there, I say, jabbing my thumb up toward the door. And I don't need a bodyguard. My fans are, well, passionate, but... What if someone was coming down the hallway that wasn't me? You can't just go anywhere anymore. It's too risky. You know this, he stresses. Especially now that you're the prince, uh, 
He waves a hand around. Carminder? Exactly. Mark smirks. The lead guy. Everyone wants a piece. You're valuable now. You're a million dollar man. I'm taking the part for free, I mutter. Mark snaps his fingers in my face. Don't say that. Don't you ever say that. He looks left and right down the hall, as if he's worried someone might have overheard me daring to express enthusiasm for my part. What are you doing out here, anyway? I hesitate. I have to just lay it out for him. No Excelsior. No way. Because instead of wandering down the aisles and waiting for autographs, it'll be photos. Aching, smiling muscles. Flash blindness, carpal tunnel, fake friends pretending they know me, and dredging up bad memories. That's not what I want from a con. Well, I begin. I kind of want to talk to you about the- Where's Gail? Once again, I thumb toward the door. He mutters at something under his breath and just his cufflinks. I'm not paying her for panic attacks. She's had a long day. I've had a long day. You've had a long day. And it isn't even Monday. Actually, it is- the press junkies, sorry, whoa, I misread that T for an I. The press junkies after filming are supposed to be the tough as balls part, not this, he goes on. This was supposed to be easy. It's pretty easy for Fishmouth to get on stage, I point out. Actually, I want to talk to you about, can it wait, he interrupts, pulling out his phone. It dings again. Another email or a text, I don't know. I'm going to handle this. Why don't you go have some lunch, yeah? We can talk about it later, I promise. My shoulders slump. Whatever the opposite of promise sworn is, that's Mark. Later is never going to come. Yeah, good. Oh, and Daring, yeah? Diet, don't forget. I think the third floor has a cafeteria. I make a face. Cafeteria food? That's cardboard, bro. Bro, get a salad. I purse my lips. With a new workout regimen and my personal trainer, who reminds me of Wolverine with the personality of a wet cat. So, basically just Wolverine. <laughs> I've existed on protein shakes and rabbit food. And chicken. So much chicken, I could sprout feathers. And it's not even seasoned. Ugh. That... that. Who the... Who makes chicken without seasoning? I feel so bad for him. All to keep me looking like however many million dollars my body is apparently worth. Oh no. Oh, that word again. It's oh god, I cannot read. David Singh, I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it that. David Singh is the original Federation Prince. Never had to worry about crunches or cardio or airbrushing or fangirls ambushing live TV. Ambushing on live TV. The original Starfield show barely made the ratings, and yet it somehow inspired a cult following. Sorry, that was my phone. We'll get it later. His fans got for his fan he got fans for his work for inspiring people to think bigger than the earth and ignite the stars. I get fans for my abs. If I were Dave if I were him, I'm just gonna see. Yeah, I'm gonna try to if I really were Carminder, I'd tell Mark to shove off. Diplomatically, of course. And he'd listen. And I'd go get a burger down at Shake Shack. But I'm not Carminder. Not in this universe, anyway. The cafeteria on the third floor is worse than cardboard. It's an entire table of absolute gluttony and sin because donuts. Nothing but donuts. Donuts as far as the eye can see and sitting to one side like an emo kid in the high school cafeteria is one sad and lonely fruit cup. It's you and me, buddy. I take the fruit cup and find a table. There's a few other people eating breakfast. Donuts, to be exact, but I bypass them all to the far corner of the cafeteria. It overlooks Rockefeller Center. The blue and silver Starfield crowd is almost dis dissipated has almost dissipated. It's hard to think they all came for me. Me. My stomach twists and it has nothing to do with a fruit cup. I give a pineapple chunk a poke. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a guy walking towards me. 
the one who, until a moment ago, was eating a heavenly-looking chocolate-sprinkled donut. He's older than I am, with thick-rimmed glasses and a sweat mustache. Hey, he said, you're Darian Freeman. People say this to you all the time when you're famous. What do they expect me to say back? Yeah, you caught me. Instead, I just stick out a hand to shake. Hi there. Nice to meet you. He doesn't take my hand. Great show today. I know sarcasm when I hear it. Thanks, ma'am. I reply, giving him a tight-lipped smile. Me and some of my PA boys are just talking about it. He leans a little closer. Can I ask you a question? Just between us. I don't like where this is going, but there's no way for me to say no, is there? Uh, societal constraints. Gotta love it. I, and Gail isn't here to distract him while I make a break for the door. I shift uncomfortably. Uh, sure. Do you actually know anything about Starfield? My eyebrows shoot up. Because you might have all those seaside fans fooled, but they wouldn't know a decent TV show if it hit them upside the head. I bet you couldn't even tell Carmine from, Cap from Captain Kirk. That's not a question. He just assumes. You know, there's a lot of us who actually love Starfield. It's not a fad or a cash cow. It's not just a chance for you to get your face on a billboard. It matters to people. So don't ruin it, dude. He starts to walk away, then stops and half turns back to me. Oh, and just so you know, I'm not the only one who thinks it. You're a joke. I've never been good at jokes. I try to crack a smile. I'm not that funny. He doesn't smile back. Starfield isn't a game to us. We're a family, not a franchise. Just look online. Then he stalks away before I can formulate a polite, movie star-worthy reply. I clench my fork. I want to grab him by his starched shirt collar, turn him around, and shove the promise-sworn salute pointer and pinky fingers out, middle two together, thumbs down, into his eye sockets. And while I have his attention, I want to lay down in excruciating detail the synopsis of all 54 episodes I watched religiously as a nobody teenager in the suburbs of L.A. From the Knox King to Princess Amara to every moon orbiting Galactic Six and every dwarf planet from the Heliox Nebula to Andromeda, I want to tell him what that ending monologue meant to me. What it meant to see someone who looked like me in command of the Prospero. I want to cut out my fanboy heart and show him that it bleeds like every other star gunner's. I want to tell him that the Federation Prince Carminder saved my life. But I don't. Because Mark is in the back of my head saying, Don't lose your cool. Follow the director. Cash the check. Be a star. And more than anything, don't become a headline. Just look online, the so-called true fan had said. I push aside my depressing fruit cup and pull out my phone so I can search for whatever he was talking about. Did some A-lister tweet about me? Or did one of the gossip websites put something out already? It didn't take long. A few searches through Starfield-related hashtags and I found it. A blog post linked to by, linked to by one of the bigger social media outlets entitled Fantastic or Fan Service. <gasps> That's elves! I haven't read this in two years, so it's a refresher for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, um, one of the reasons why I stopped reading this was because I didn't want to have to keep stopping and restarting and stopping and restarting and stopping and restarting, and I just wanted to read it, so I did. But I don't remember all of it. <laughs> uh, so, fantastic or fan service. Against my better judgment, I opened the link. The choice of teen heartthrob Darian Freeman as the noble karma can only be seen as a slight against the true Starfield fans. It has over a thousand retweets. Hundreds of comments. Great. I copy the link to the post and begin to text it to Gail, ready to point out that this is why I shouldn't go to a con. The fans will eat me alive. But then I pause. Mark's with Gale, and if he hears that there's a bad press, even if it's just a blogger, he'll probably put me under 24-7 surveillance and force me to go to the con. And if that con is full of people like Mr. True Fan here and whoever writes the Rebel Gunner blog, well, then I'm screwed. It'll be humiliating. Worse than any dunk tank. But if Gale can't get me out of it and Mark won't, what would Carminder do? I thump my phone against the table, annoyed. He wouldn't blame others for his problems, that's for sure. 
he'd take things into his own hands. Maybe I can call Excel the Khan instead. Pose as my own assistant. I'm an actor, aren't I? I can speak with the Khan director and get this whole ordeal sorted out. Googling Excelsicon, I started scrolling through their website again. I tried the number for the corporate event manager company, but I get lost in a phone tree. I need a human being. E after even more scrolling, I find the cons about us page, which doesn't have a phone number, but does have the same name of the guy who founded it. One quick white pages search later and I've got his info. Score. I clear my throat, punch in the number and listen to it ring. Maybe the fans don't think I'm anything more than a business what? Sorry. A brainless soap actor with more hair gel than talent, as the blog post so eloquently put it. But I am an actor, so I better get to acting. That is the end of that particular chapter. Mm. I'm tempted just to keep going. How long is the next one? Oh, good lord. Ooh, it's almost 10 pages. Mm, I'll save it for next time. And by next time, I mean I'm going to stop this video and start another one. Sorry, but I need to crank them out. That way you guys can, you know, listen to my dulcet grating tones. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, then leave me a comment below telling me how I can better the service. Um... But yeah, I hope you guys have a great spooky season, and uh, that you guys stick around and let me read to you some more. Anyway, bye.